Hello, everyone. I'm Zhao Chuang. Let's draw the body of Spinosaurus. The Spinosaurus was a very mysterious animal. We know that they spent plenty of time in the water, and scientific discoveries over the years keep proving this. Especially a new study in 2022 confirmed that the bone density of Spinosaurus was very high, proving that this animal relied on buoyancy to move in water for a long time. Therefore, the entire body structure of Spinosaurus looked like that of aquatic animals, which needs emphasizing in our drawing. First of all, the shape of its tail was similar to that of crocodiles, which was suitable for swimming. Its legs were more suitable for paddling. But in our later drawing, we'll draw it walking on land. There are two theories about how it walked. One is quadrupedal walking as shown in this model, and the other is that the Spinosaurus may have walked more on two legs. But because the legs were somewhat short, it probably couldn't stand on two legs for too long. Due to its body structure, its standing posture might not be the same as other dinosaurs. It was more like in some early reconstructions, with its tail dragging on the ground, and its body standing upright. Now let's draw the Spinosaurus standing on two legs, starting with its head. Let's draw the tip of its nose, then determine the size of its head. The back of its head should probably be here. First, use fine lines to draw the boundary between where its upper jaw met its lower jaw. Its upper jaw bent downward with a notch here, extended backward like this, and then sloped down here. We draw it diagonally behind this corner, probably here, and its eyes were positioned rather high. Behind the eye, there was a temporal fenestra extending forward. In front of the eye, there was an ant orbital fenestra. Here, we draw its nose and the nostril, followed by its slender snout. We can draw the nostril a little bulged. This was its lacrimal bone, and draw a brow ridge above the eye. Then behind the nose, above the lacrimal bone, we can draw a crest. Now let's draw its lower jaw. The tip of the lower jaw was very narrow but there were developed muscles here, so the rear part of its snout was relatively broad. Some folds can be drawn at the mouth corner. Next, let's draw its teeth. The teeth at the front of the mouth pointed downward, while the teeth on the lower jaw projected upward like tusks. Then draw a series of small teeth pointing downward. The teeth were relatively large here, and became smaller toward the back. Then, let's draw its neck. First, we draw the dorsal side of its neck, which was shaped like a big S. Its neck was long and flexible. There was a group of muscles on the side of the neck. and another group of muscles at the bottom. It had three groups of muscles in total. When viewed from the side, the middle group was thicker, while the upper and lower muscles were thinner. From the side of the lower jaw to the muscles below, we can draw a piece of floppy skin. Draw some folds here to give it a softer look. Then move on to its throat and chest. Start from the shoulders. This is roughly where the collarbone was on its chest, 
which was covered by muscles. So just draw an outline. The muscles on this side will be connected to the shoulder. Now let's draw its full limbs. namely the upper and lower arms. Next, move on to its fingers. The first finger, the second finger, and the third finger on the other side. Now, let's draw its claws. The first claw was large and not very curved. The second claw was shorter and the third claw was very short. Let's draw the back of its body. Its belly. And its back again. Now, we are outlining the ribs viewed from the side. We can slightly show the ribs. This is where the pelvis was. Then, let's draw the legs of Spinosaurus. Its legs were not long. This is where its knee was. And the other knee was here. It had very short legs, then draw its shanks. ankles. Its feet looked quite flat when viewed from the side. The big toe was very long and could touch the ground. The other toes formed a web that spread out on the ground like that of ducks. The foot on this side was the same, composed of the big toe and the other three toes. The toenails were also relatively flat. Here was its ischium, behind which was its tail. We'll draw its tail swinging over. When viewed from the front, it's flat on the left and right sides. The muscles at the base of the tail were relatively thick, while the muscles at the tip became flatter. The tail consisted of two groups of muscles, with the upper group being thinner. Then, let's draw its back sail, which looked like this from the front. The back sail was shaped like a saddle with a notch in the middle. Then, we draw the neural spines that made up the back sail as well as the neural spines. on the dorsal side of the tail. These neural spines made the tail look like a big rudder. Then let's add some details. For example, we can draw a boundary between the side of its body to distinguish the upper and lower body colors. Then draw some folds on the underside of the belly as well as on the lower part of the neck.
there were folds on the elbows caused by frequent bending motions. We can draw a layer of skin between the thigh and the trunk to connect them. On the back of its hands, we can draw large scales. We do the same for its insteps. There were scales below its tail as well. Then starting from the head, let's draw a row of spikes all over the back sail. Finally, we slightly show the ground. Good, like this, we finish drawing the body of Spinosaurus.